Hello and welcome to Blue Zone. Today I'm going to talk about navigation using the HSI on the FSX VR Superbug. My focus is going to be on a single waypoint navigation. Everything I am talking about here is very basic and hopefully providing you with a building block to learn more about navigation. The objective for us today is to learn how to navigate to a waypoint with a specific direction. That may be important to you if you're trying to line up with a runway when you get heading towards a waypoint or perhaps you're wanting to attack a target from a specific direction. Now, the waypoint themselves are numerous types. Some of them are directional and some are not. For example, the GPS and lock ground target the target are ground references. They are not actual transmitting references. And they are also not directional. The VOR and TACAN on the other hand, those two are directional and emit signal that are uh, actually on every one degree. So let's take a look at this setup here. I have an airport on the right hand side and I'm flying to a waypoint A. Now as you see I'm heading, if I head straight for the airport, I will get there and then I need to find my runway. I need to uh, line up for the runway. So let's say I want to get on runway 05. Once I get there I have to turn around, try to find 05 and land on it. Now there is an easier way to do, this, to do this if you actually use a concept called arcing and using navigation you can arc and line up with the runway and then it's easy as pie and the benefit is if you have bad weather or poor visibility using navigation and the arcing concept you will find your runway every single time. Now let's take a look at what a uh, waypoint looks like, or more specifically in this case here, a VOR. A VOR is a station that transmits uh, every single degrees. So here there's a representation of every 10 degrees, there is a radial transmitted, and a zero degree is a reference that is transmitted, but there's also a radial at every degree. The sole purpose of the VOR system and the radials is to provide the pilot with a reference as to where he is exactly in reference to the VOR station. Now if we look at the, the plane itself, you will notice that the plane is flying in that direction, the, uh, the jet plane on the bottom right. And if you look, the direction that he's flying is 315 degrees. Now we're assuming there's no wind whatsoever. He's flying straight to a heading of 315 degrees. But if we look at the VOR position, he is actually positioned on the inbound radio 135 degrees, which is southeast of the VOR uh, station. Now a bearing, which is a new concept, a bearing is essentially where you are flying to in reference to the VOR. And in this case here, we're flying a bearing of 315 degrees. So in order to determine the bearing, if you put a line over the VOR from your wings all the way to VOR, anything past the line is essentially your bearing. And if you think of a bearing, so let's say the VOR station itself, wherever the VOR station is, is where the bearing is. And we'll take a look at that. Let's take another example and look at the propeller plane on the left hand side. The propeller plane from a VOR standpoint is sitting on the radio 315 outbound radio because he's heading out of uh, and away from the VOR station. His heading in his aircraft, if he looks at where he's heading, he's probably heading around 330 degrees. But if you look at his bearing, the bearing itself would be towards the VOR. So in this case here, its bearing would be 135. So there's the bearing for the jet aircraft that we discussed a moment ago. And here's the bearing for the propeller airplane. 
it might be a little bit tough and I struggled with it a little bit myself to understand but it's uh, those are key concepts that you really want to get into your head so now we're going to take a look at the HSI display that is in the Superbug and to try to get you to comprehend what we just discussed and how it fits in with the HSI so now there is a plane that is located in the center of the HSI which acts as a reference and at the top of the HSI you will find your heading now you will see that the bearing pointer so you'll see there's two triangles at the bottom there's one bearing pointer that's dedicated to the tack hand and there's one bearing pointer that's dedicated to the waypoint and what I mean by this if you look at the navigation option that you have available to you there's number two which is a tack hand uh, station that you can select or there is number 14 which is a waypoint that you can select if you look at the bearing pointers they point towards the tack hand so if we look at the tack hand uh, if we look at the tack end bearing pointer, we have tack end selected. The one on the external circle of the, uh, the, the bearing degrees is the one that's used for tack end. So if we look at our plane, we're flying away from the, the VOR or tack end station. Therefore, the bearing pointer is behind us. And in this case here, it's pointing at 283 degrees. If, uh, if you look at the waypoint, uh, waypoint bearing pointer, it just so happened to be uh, in the same in line with the VOR, so therefore it's pointing the same way. But it's also pointing away from the, the, the it's pointing away from the plane because we are past that waypoint as well. So you will notice that uh, the VOR indicates we're 16.6 .6 mile away from it, whereas the uh, waypoint in the case that we're 14.9 miles away from the, the, the VOR sta the VOR station and waypoint so essentially it means that the VOR station 16.6 .6 miles the waypoint is slightly forward of that but still behind us at 14.9 now I already spoke about the uh, number 2 number 14 which are the two different uh, navigation that you can select now let's look at the data block. Each attack and the waypoint will get a data block based on the attack and frequency you have selected. And on the waypoint side, it's based on the waypoint you have selected or transferred to it. So I've expanded the data block on the left-hand side. Let's take a look, see what it looks like. So the first line indicates the bearing and the distance from the attack and station, in this case here. So it indicates that we have a bearing of 283. If you look at the triangle on the outside of the circle, it indicates 283. And we're 16.6 .6 miles away from it. The next line below in the data block says 4505. It means it will take us 45 hours and five minutes to get to our waypoint. I suspect since we're flying away from the waypoint that this will just keep incrementing. The following line below that is a SCA, which stands for Seattle. So it's a waypoint identifier that tells us what our tech end is talking to. In this case, it's Seattle. Below that is estimated fuel on arrival. Uh, since we're moving away from the VOR station, it makes sense that it would have zero fuel left by the time we get there since we're moving away from it. And the last one is not used that much, but it essentially indicates how far you should start decreasing yeah, at a three degree angle to land your plane, assuming you were flying towards it to achieve a, a proper descent of three degree. Now let's take a look at the top right hand corner of this screen here. As you see, uh, this is a, a part of the HUD that you would have in uh, your Superbug. Now at the top, you have the heading, magnetic heading indication which in this case is 90, 100, and 110. If you look at the carrot, heading carrot, the heading carrot is basically where you're flying to from a heading standpoint. 
in this case here we're flying about 101 102 and uh, besides the heading carrot you will see there's a command heading Q it's a vertical bar that will move that vertical bar will move based on commands that it gets from the navigation system depending on the course that you select and I will I will show you this in a moment so this so essentially the way it works is if you put your carrot over top of the command heading Q you will get to the course you have selected now we talked about course select let's look at number 11 number 11 has a course CSEL course select essentially what that does is it allows you to select a course that you wish to end on in this case here we're selecting a course of 343 so we're indicating that we want to end up on a bearing of 343 what will happen is the heading the command heading queue in your HUD that little vertical bar will move on the on the bear on the uh, the heading magnetic heading uh, scale all you have to do is put your heading carrot on top of the command heading queue and follow that command heading queue and what it will do is it will bring you directly and onto your course select which is in this case here 342 degrees I will do demonstrate this in the super bug uh, so you'll see how it works now quickly all I want to point out here is the airport that we're going to fly to on the left hand side we're planning on landing on runway 05 that's highlighted in yellow on the right hand side you see the approach plate where it indicates that in order to make the 05 runway you need we need to come in on a bearing of 053 degrees which is what we will do let's put the, this information to practice okay so let's get situated if we look in the uh, HSI, I'm at, uh, I have a bearing of 083. I'm going, I'm going to get to the airport in nine minutes, going to Norfolk, ORF, and 13,000 pounds or 12,000 pounds of fuel is what I will have when I get there. And at 34 miles, it says I should start my descent at three degrees to make the runway. Now, to get us set up like we want it, I need to bring the, the bearing pointer to 090 which is uh, east the way you move the pointer to where you want to go is you basically turn the opposite direction you want it to go in this case here I will roll to the left to force the bearing pointer to go down towards the 090 and once it reaches 090 I will turn towards 090 Now while we're waiting for this to happen, let's talk about the bearing pointer. So this one here, you notice it has a T in it, and it's for the tank in. And I said that if uh, here is our VOR, and notice how the bearing pointer is pointing to the VOR. If I had a waypoint, then I would have an inside bearing pointer. So let's see how that happens. I'm gonna set it up here. Set a waypoint. Notice how I have an inside bearing pointer. Waypoint has a period inside, which I guess is a point. So I will take off the bearing pointer so it does not confuse us. Okay, so we're approaching on our 90 degrees. So I will turn towards our bearing pointer to try to line up our 90 degrees so that we have a, uh, the setup that we discussed before. So now I'm getting towards the 90 degrees bearing towards the airport and I'm almost there. Now bear in mind this is the manual way and I will show you an easier way after but uh, let's uh, learn to walk then we can learn to run. and uh, it should switch to 90 degrees any moment. Now if you recall when we looked at the airport diagram our objective is to get to a bearing of 053 to make our runway. So we are at 90 degrees 
and I will turn and put my carrot over the heading the command heading queue uh, that will ensure it will compensate for wind and ensure that I stay on that 090 you can see that on the HUD on the right hand side now the concept I talked about was to actually do a arcing and the way you accomplish this is you bring the bearing pointer to your 9 o'clock or your 3 o'clock depending on which direction you need it to arc and then you try to maintain the same distance range wise to perform an arc. Some place will say you need to arc at 10 miles x amount of degrees to get to the runway that you need. So let's start our arcing so we'll bring the bearing pointer to our 9 o'clock. Now once you have the bearing pointer at your 9 o'clock what you want to do is keep it at the 9 o'clock and you will need to compensate in order to keep it there. And the goal is once we get near 53 we want to start turning back towards the bearing pointer to intercept the bearing 53. So it is at my 9 o'clock now and notice how it's already come down to 87. Now take a look at my HUD on the right hand side. We're still fair amounts away from it. So we don't need to turn that much to keep it on the 9 o'clock. But the closer you get, the faster the rate changes. So if you arc at 10, 10 miles from the airport, you'll be arcing a lot faster than we are now at 24, 24 miles. So my goal is to keep this bearing pointer on my 9 o'clock until I get close to my 53. I will start turning in towards 53 most likely 8 to 10 degrees prior to make sure I hit my mark because I know how to adjust for 53. Now notice it's now 79 so we're gonna keep it uh, going here. Once again, I want to point out that the burn pointer, if you look to the right of it, you will see the VOR station. So we're essentially arcing around the VOR. And we're currently on the bearing of 7.4. Now if you look at the burn pointer, it matches what you see in the data block which is 72 degrees bearing. Seventy-one degrees. And notice my range is still about the same, 24.1. Now I probably got a little bit uh, too far ahead. Yeah, see how my range changed to 24.00? So a perfect arc, it should be within one mile, plus or minus 0.5. Okay, 67. So around uh, 53 I will start compensating to make my... Around uh, maybe 50, 63, maybe 61. 8 degrees past. 8 degrees or so I will try to compensate to make the 53 degree. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, 61. So I'm going to start turning towards the bearing pointer because I want to catch the 053. Thankfully, it's easier for us because we're further away. But as you get closer, it changes really quick. So you have to be ready for that. So you may need to give yourself more room to make it to where you want to go. Notice how quick it is. And now I still have a few degrees to go, so I'm just going to slow down and let it go some more before I, I readjust to towards the bearing pointer.
Now, if you're interested in knowing where you position our relations to the VOR, we are inbound to the VOR. So if you look at the other side of the bearing pointer, which is down here, that's actually your inbound VOR. Now I'm getting close to my 53 degrees and there I am. So I will turn and go towards the 53 degrees and follow the heading the command heading queue and that should keep me on the 53 so now we're 18 miles from the airport and I purposely put some weather on just to show you that uh, you can find your way to the airport and get to the proper proper runway I will speed it up a little bit so we don't have to wait too long but what you want to do while you're flying is maintain your carrot over the the uh, command heading queue and that will ensure that you stay on the 53 degrees now we're at 15 miles and we're two minutes out if you look at the data block we are two minutes out from the airport Now this is essentially the manual way to get there. I will show you a, a much easier way that's not automatic, but it, it, it uses a, a navigational aid. And once you know how to use that, you'll be, you'll be golden. You can also couple that to the autopilot. So I'm gonna start going down and we're gonna take a look to see how it looks outside. Notice we can't see anything, so we're getting close. I will get some uh, some altitude. Oh, I let my uh, I let my bearing slip here. I'm at 54, so I need to turn the opposite direction. Okay, I'm getting close now. That's good. So I need to get the opposite direction to get it to go down to 53 again. Although 53 would be uh, 55, 54 would be pretty close. Now we are close, so that will change pretty quick. So you need to pay attention. There we go. Follow the command heading Q. I should have paid attention. So now we're seven miles from the airport and I can see the airport already. I am not sure if you're able to see it uh, on YouTube so I will uh, keep my my current bearing and show you that we're on 53. If you look at the HUD we're a little bit off. It's kind of, if, you, if you see see my flight path marker is a little bit to the right so there's some wind. So the heading the command heading Q is actually compensating for wind to keep me on that 53. Now you should be able to see it pretty clearly that we see the runway 05 in front of us. And this is how you get your bearing the manual way. Now hang tight and uh, I will show you how to get the same result but this time with a navigation aid that's gonna help you a lot and make it a lot simpler. Okay, we are back and uh, now we're back to where we were. And you'll notice in the data block that we're 90 degrees bearing and we're flying due east and we're heading towards RF. Now, if you take a look at the actual HSI screen you will see that the at the bottom right hand corner there's something called CSEL course selection essentially what you can do is select the course that you want to get to the bearing that you want to be at what I mean by this is first you click it to the screen and you will it will put a diamond in the top right hand corner of the HSI use your mouse wheel and select the desired degree in our case 53 degrees now all we have to do if we look at to the HUD itself 
is follow the command heading queue and put our carrot over top of the command heading queue and that will bring us to the actual bearing of uh, 053 by following the command heading queue oh I went past it I think I still had stabilizer, stabilizer on okay so all we want to do is follow this command heading queue right now as you see if you look at the uh, the HSI it's trying to take us to the line which is uh, represent 053 and then it will make us turn onto the line until we intercept the bearing of 053 so I'm going to keep with the uh, command heading queue and follow it all the way in and see what we got. So we're 20 miles from it. So you can see how that takes a lot of the manual work away from you. But it's good to know the manual work because there's other navigation items that you need to be aware of uh, where you're at. So knowing the manual way is a good thing having an AVE to help you is just a bonus. Okay. So I'm writing the command heading Q. As you see here, it looks like it's on a steady turn, so I will get a steady roll, and I should be following it in. It's very subtle, and it takes you very gradually. Once we are near, then we will take a look on the outside and see if we see the runway. As you already know we saw the runway when we were doing it manually so chances are if we're on 053 we will see the runway even though we're doing it with this uh, navigation aid. Now we are getting closer so it will start getting a little bit quicker changing as you see at the top our heading is changing rapidly if we fall in the command heading queue. And I will start getting us down so we can see the runway once we get close. Because the previous session, uh, the previous time we were in the clouds, you couldn't see the runway. So I'll bring us down to about uh, 1200 feet. And then we can take a look. I'm currently, if you look at data block, currently at 063. And from the uh, aircraft and the approach plate, I mean at the, air, the airport and the approach plate, we know that the elevation is 18 feet. So I am able to go to 18 feet if I was using barometric, but since I'm using a radar altimeter, zero feet is the one I'm looking for. Zero feet not to exceed, could be painful. Okay, we are getting there. We are at the uh, 58.058. Following it in, 057. Once we are on 053, I will show us the outside view and then we'll see how we fare. Now notice in my HUD that my, my navigation item seems to be pulled to the left and that's because of wind but my command heading queue will compensate for that wind so trust the command heading queue once you set it just follow it and it will get you where you need to go 56 degrees and we're seven miles 55 so it's changing a lot less now because we're really close to it. 
Now the change is slow. Okay, we're five miles, 55. Let's see where we're at. I guess the wind's pushing us a little bit. As you can see, even though we're 55 and we're still following the command heading, we can easily capture the, uh, the runway and land. And it's probably gonna get 53, so if there's a lot of wind, start early. It's that simple. I hope this video is helpful to you, and I hope it helps you comprehend some concept. Uh, feel free to leave me a question or comments. I'm planning on doing more videos. Uh, let me know what would be interesting to you, and I'd be happy to uh, to do some of those videos. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click like and subscribe and i hope you enjoyed it it was a blast have a great day take care bye bye